On the channel recently, I've been trying to find out the most popular and most disliked wrestling events of all time by using cage match rankings, and I quickly realised that the vast majority of you guys who watch my videos don't really agree with the results. I too felt some of the ratings we got were a bit suspect, so I wanted to get a real vote from the people who actually watch this channel. Not only can we put the results out and let you guys fight amongst yourselves instead of blaming the dudes over a cage match, but we can also gather results from fans who who were there during the 80s, 90s, 2000s and beyond. Judging by the viewer demographics for wrestling bios, we should get a more level vote, and I think it's just better asking you guys and letting you, the viewer, see where your favourites ranked. So I asked you guys to fill in a form to let me know your favourite Wrestlemania, and I got over 4,000 replies. Thank you very much for the big response to this by the way. You've selected your favourite Wrestlemania of all time, and the list you've given me to work with today is definitely a good one. Every Wrestlemania was selected by at least a few people, so that shows the good range I had to work with today. But let's look at the top 10 answers and we'll see if your favourite made the cut. At number 10, with 117 responses, it's WrestleMania 21 from 2005. This is a great WrestleMania event with a little something for everyone. WWE did a great job with the overall theme of WrestleMania 21, and even though WrestleMania went Hollywood again in 2023, I think there was something a bit more special about the first time around. You've got the very first Money in the Bank ladder match taking place at this Mania, setting the bar ridiculously high from the get go. You've got an excellent Randy Orton vs Undertaker match along with Eddie Guerrero vs Rey Mysterio. You get to see John Cena's very first WWE Championship victory when he defeats JBL. And you've also got Batista's crowning moment when he steps up to his old evolution leader Triple H. The match of the night though, in my opinion, was Kurt Angle vs Shawn Michaels. They don't call HBK Mr WrestleMania for nothing and you're gonna quickly learn that throughout this video. Angle vs Michaels is an absolute classic that doesn't let up at all. Matt wrestling, high flying, stiff shots, false finishes that are actually used really really well. It's one for the ages and a match that still holds up as one of the greatest of all time. Mania 21 is a great show and it's good to see that many people think it ranks above all the rest. In at number 9, it's WrestleMania 6, April 1st, 1990, 121 votes. 14 matches take place at this WrestleMania, yet it doesn't really feel slow. Some Mania events can feel pretty bloated, especially during these early days of the event, but this one's still really fun to watch from start to end. Piper vs Bad News, Demolition vs The Colossal Connection, Jake Roberts vs Ted DiBiase, even the Dusty Rhodes and Sapphire vs Savage and Sherry match is pretty entertaining. You've then got the main event, The Ultimate Warrior vs Hulk Hogan, and I don't doubt for a single moment that this match meant a lot of viewers who grew up during this time period. This really was the ultimate challenge. Many young fans liked the Warrior just as much as they liked Hogan. Two legends of WWF, two larger than life superheroes, there's an undeniable energy within the Toronto Sky Dome when this battle takes place, and for those who watched it when they were younger, they would never ever forget it. Fans felt like it was a passing of the torch moment when IC Champion Ultimate Warrior defeated WWF Champion Hulk Hogan, and indeed, that's what it was supposed to be. So try to watch this one without the benefit of hindsight and enjoy it for what it is. Two heroes of the 80s squaring off at the beginning of the 90s, in front of an awesome crowd in the Toronto Sky Dome. The number 8 spot goes to WrestleMania 14, 1998 show from Boston. 124 of you thought this was the best WrestleMania ever, and while it's not one of my all time favourites, I can still 100% see the appeal and appreciate it for what it is. This pay per view marks the beginning of the true, real Attitude Era. On the Reliving the War series, I pointed out how remarkably different Raw was the night after this WrestleMania in comparison to previous Raw shows. The gloves came off the moment Stone Cold Steve Austin defeats Shawn Michaels in the main event and WWF didn't look back. You've also got Triple H vs Owen Hart at this show, a dumpster match pitting Terry Funk and Cactus Jack against the New Age Outlaws, and you've got the long-awaited Battle of the Brothers when The Undertaker faces Kane for the very first time. 
The significance of this WrestleMania can't be overstated. It's a turning point for WWF in the Monday Night War, and while it would still take a little time for WWF to become truly dominant on Monday nights, this WrestleMania gives us a little taste of what was yet to come. WrestleMania 30 with 126 votes takes the number 7 spot, 2014's Mania from New Orleans. The miracle on Bourbon Street, a moment that connected with so many people watching at home. Daniel Bryan overcame the odds not just on this night but over his entire WWE run up until this point. Fans were clamoring to see Daniel Bryan get featured in a main event role and fans wanted to see Bryan pushed as the main face of the company, but the authority made it impossible for Daniel to catch a break. Daniel's detractors said he was too small and too average to be WWE's number one guy, but he proved everybody wrong by defeating Triple H at the beginning of Mania 30 before going on to defeat Randy Orton and Batista in the show's main event. Both matches were excellent. The end of the show provides fans with a real feel-good moment, one of those moments that WWE tries time and time again to manufacture, but this time it felt genuine and that's what made it so awesome. Elsewhere on the card, you've got a very story-driven Bray Wyatt vs John Cena match. We get to see Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock sharing the ring together for an unintentionally hilarious promo. And then you've got one of the biggest moments in WrestleMania history when The Undertaker's undefeated streak comes to an end at the hands of Brock Lesnar. This is an unbelievable moment in every sense of the word. Fans couldn't process what they just witnessed when The Beast defeated the Phenom in the middle of the ring. And the WWE did a great job in regards to how they produce this from a TV standpoint, from the reactions in the audience to the delay in playing Brock's theme music. It's still unbelievable even when you watch it back today, you get brought right back to the moment on repeat viewings. WrestleMania 30 is a great show for sure, an absolute roller coaster event that leaves you feeling very entertained. At number 6, it's WrestleMania 10 from Madison Square Garden in 1994. 128 people voted for this one. This milestone WrestleMania features two WWF title matches, seeing as we had two Royal Rumble winners in 1994. Dex Luger faced Yokozuna in the first title match, and the winner of that match would go on to face challenger Bret Hart. To even things out, Bret also had to wrestle earlier in the night. The show opened up with Bret Hart vs Owen Hart, and that one is still considered today by many to be the greatest WrestleMania open match in history. The boys from Calgary put on a wrestling clinic in Madison Square Garden, proving at the very start of the pay-per-view that they're two of the best wrestlers in the world. It's a hard-fought match that keeps you glued to your TV screen, and in the end, it's younger brother Owen who emerges victorious. With this defeat fresh in his mind, the hitman has to face Yokozuna in the WrestleMania 10 main event, and he's able to defeat the big man to close WrestleMania with another feel-good moment. But Owen watches over the celebration, knowing that he can win that WWF title if given another opportunity against his big brother. Also at this WrestleMania, you've got the legendary Shawn Michaels vs Razor Ramon ladder match. It's been surpassed nowadays in terms of ladder spots and high risk offense, but back then this match was revolutionary. Real edge of your seat stuff where you didn't know what to expect next. Razor and Michaels put on a match that would innovate and inspire others. Fans had never seen anything like this before on pay per view, and even though it wasn't the first WWF ladder match, it still stood out as the absolute best for a very long time. Gripping, entertaining, and a whole lot of fun. WrestleMania 10, in my opinion, isn't filled to the brim with good matches like some of the other WrestleManias covered in this video, but when it is good, it's great. It's still a show worth checking out today. 133 of you thought that WrestleMania 3 from Pontiac, Michigan was the best Mania ever. Mania 3 takes our number 5 spot. This is the only 80s WrestleMania in our top 10. It's the first WrestleMania that shows us how big of a draw WWF really was during this era, seeing as the Pontiac Silverdome was absolutely jam packed. The official numbers have been contested though, with some saying it was closer to 80,000 rather than 93,000, but who cares? Just look at this, it's absolutely amazing. WrestleMania 3 also provided fans with two key ingredients that would become expected in future Mania shows excellent matches that go above and beyond and big moments that stand the test of time. In case of the former, we got an excellent match in Randy Savage vs Ricky Steamboat that many to this day still say is the greatest Mania match of all time. It's a meticulously planned and perfectly executed bout that put a lot more emphasis on athleticism. Remember, these were the days of cartoon characters in WWF and over 
the top larger than life superheroes and supervillains. Savage and Steamboat wanted to prove that the real money was in the actual performance itself and they ended up putting on an intercontinental championship match that still gets talked about today. It's still as good now as it was back then. In regards to the big moments that stand the test of time, WrestleMania 3 included what could be considered the first ever real WrestleMania moment. One of those moments that gets replayed over and over again every single year and that's when Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant stood toe to toe in the middle of the ring, the irresistible force meeting the immovable object. Hogan vs Andre isn't just a Wrestlemania moment, it's a legitimate pop culture moment and while critics have ripped the match apart piece by piece in order to prove something, it really doesn't matter. Hogan vs Andre at Mania 3 was what the WWF was all about during this era, good vs evil, heroes vs villains, the good guy overcoming unlikely odds. Hogan body slamming Andre made the place go crazy and it doesn't matter if you're a Hogan fan or not, his star power in the 80s was totally undeniable. Also at Mania 3 you've got Roddy Piper vs Adrian Adonis in a hair vs hair match, a solid opener with a Can-Am connection taking on Bob Orton and Don Morocco, the Dream Team vs the Rougeau brothers and you've also got the Hart Foundation teaming up with Danny Davis to do battle with the British Bulldogs and Tito Santana. It's a fun show all around and it set a benchmark for WrestleMania events to follow. It's an absolute must see event and an important event in WWF or WWE history. At number 4 it's WrestleMania 18, the 2002 WrestleMania from Toronto with 147 votes. The WWF went back to the Sky Dome and fans inside the Sky Dome didn't forget. They didn't forget about the ultimate challenge back at WrestleMania 6 and they were ready to cheer on Hulk Hogan once again as he battled The Rock. Billed as Icon vs Icon, Rock vs Hogan was a masterclass in how to work a crowd and turn something unexpected into something special. Everyone involved expected the fans to get behind The Rock and boo the NWO's Hollywood Hogan, but fans decided to get behind the Hulkster and Hogan didn't miss a beat. Both he and Rock played up to this unexpected crowd reaction and in doing so they created a great match that completely feeds off the audience. Other guys may have been a bit lost here, other guys would also just follow the script and not deviate from something so obvious, but both Hogan and Rock were pros and they ended up stating the show at WrestleMania 18. It's still so much fun to watch nowadays. Elsewhere on the card, Stone Cold Steve Austin took on Scott Hall. The bad guy got another chance at WrestleMania and even though he came up short, fans of Scott Hall, like myself, were happy to see him back in the spotlight. The Undertaker and Ric Flair had a great match at this WrestleMania too. Ric Flair's finest match since coming over from WCW in 2001. The Nature Boy had struggled a bit in regards to his confidence and self esteem. He said himself that the later years of WCW had dragged him down quite a bit and with also having personal problems behind the curtain, Ric Flair didn't really feel like the Nature Boy anymore. This match against The Undertaker, the longest match on the card, is a return to form for Slick Rick and it's one of The Undertaker's more interesting matches during the streak. The main event featured Chris Jericho vs Triple H. Both men knew they had a tough act to follow seeing as Rock and Hogan went on third from last. The match they had was definitely solid but the audience was pretty drained at the end of the show and the match suffers a little because of it. It's still a good bout but you will appreciate it more if you don't watch Rock vs Hogan before it. It's a shame really seeing as it's Chris Jericho's first and only WrestleMania main event. WrestleMania 20, where it all begins again from Madison Square Garden in 2004 comes in at number 3. It got 150 responses. This one, I feel, is the complete package. This show's paced incredibly well with matches taking place in the absolute best order possible and you never feel tired or burnt out watching it. It's filled with good to great matches with the only one getting a negative crowd reaction being the Goldberg vs Brock Lesnar showdown but I still find that match entertaining to watch just because of how hostile the MSG audience was towards the competitors. I also like watching Goldberg and Brock react to the crowd. John Cena kicked things off with a crowd pleasing victory over the big show to capture the US title. There's two fatal 4 way tag team matches which you may think is overkill but both matches are good. Jericho vs Christian has the unexpected heel turn of Trish Stratus that I really didn't see coming when I watched the show live. There's Evolution vs The Rock and Sock connection match which doesn't get a whole lot of praise but I thought it was good. Mick Foley put himself under a lot of pressure at Mania 20 and his performance may have suffered because of it but man when 
Whenever The Rock and Ric Flair go at it, there's some really funny moments. Both guys look like they were having fun in there. WrestleMania 20 then goes into high speed towards the end of the show. The final three matches were all good, with Eddie Guerrero defending the WWE title against Kurt Angle, The Undertaker returning to his old dead man character to once again face his little brother Kane, and then there's the Triple Threat World Heavyweight Championship match featuring Triple H, Chris Benoit and Shawn Michaels. That match doesn't get brought up anymore by WWE for obvious reasons, and I know there's many fans who nowadays won't admit to enjoying a Chris Benoit match. That's absolutely fine if you feel that way, and for sure, I know what you mean when you say it's different watching his matches after what he did, you know? But this triple threat main event was considered a classic after the final bell, so much so that a rematch was booked the following month on pay per view. Again, it's a really well booked WrestleMania in terms of match order and match outcomes. There's always something to look forward to at this event, with big matches sprinkled throughout the entire show. I think this is a good WrestleMania to show folks who've never watched the Mania show before because it's so well paced. In at number 2, it was my choice, my favourite Wrestlemania is Wrestlemania 19 and it got 342 votes. Coming from Seattle, Washington, Safeco Field, Mania 19 looks amazing, the stadium looks spectacular for this Mania. Inside the ring you get so many good matches that it's hard to pick a favourite, though personally I'm gonna go with the showstopper. HBK vs Chris Jericho takes place as the sun begins to set, and it's one of those matches you can watch again and again and never get tired of it. HBK returned at SummerSlam 2002 where he took part in an excellent street fight with Triple H. This WrestleMania match against Chris Jericho is much more focused on the in-ring action as opposed to chair shots, ladder spots and all that stuff. So I see this as HBK's true return to form. Having an opponent like Chris Jericho was so important too because Chris could pretty much do anything Sean could do. And in this matchup, Y2J was determined to prove that fact. In the end, Sean got the all important victory but Jericho got the last laugh. Vince McMahon took on Hollywood Hogan at this show, you go into it not knowing what to expect really and well it's a complete bloodbath, it's actually way better than what you might think. It's filled with elaborate spots and maybe the spots were a bit overdone, but overdoing it's kind of important in Vince McMahon matches so yeah, no complaints. Anytime people bring up Booker T vs Triple H, it's always because of the build up. No one talks about how well these two work together in the ring, and instead everyone uses the build up to try and prove that Triple H is a bad man, both personally and professionally. I say watch what happens in the ring and enjoy a WrestleMania match instead of getting wound up over TV characters, and I say that as a big fan of Booker T. Yes, Booker T winning would have been amazing, and yes, I also feel like the wrong person won that match, but it's still good seeing these two classes at WrestleMania and I really don't think Booker's stock as a pro wrestler was hurt after WrestleMania. It could have went up, but it didn't go down. Rock vs Austin Part 3 also takes place at WrestleMania 19. It's much different than their previous WrestleMania encounters, but that's what I feel makes it so good. You've got Hollywood Rock here being as cocky as ever while Stone Cold's coming to terms with ending his wrestling career for good. We didn't know it back then, but when you watch it back, it does feel like he knew he was going to hang up the boots following this showdown with the people's champion. The show ends with Brock Lesnar vs Kurt Angle, two amateur superstars going at it for the WWE Championship. The two utilise their mat wrestling abilities to great effect before building up to more explosive offence. Brock Lesnar's on the top rope trying to pull off a shooting star press and even though that didn't work out too well, the match itself as a whole was still loads of fun. If you decide to watch Mania 19 then don't skip the undercard either. There's more good stuff to be found including Matt Hardy vs Rey Mysterio, a women's triple threat match featuring Victoria Jazz and Trish Stratus, and there's a good Smackdown triple threat tag team match featuring Chris Benoit and Rhino, Los Guerreros and Team Angle. No surprises then, at number 1 it's Wrestlemania 17 from Houston, Texas in 2001. 1,652 responses, making up a ridiculous 40% of the vote. You guys absolutely love Mania 17 and yeah, it is good. It's not my favourite but it is very very good. This one marks the end of the WWF's Attitude Era. The company had announced their purchase of WCW mere days before the event, and so the Monday Night Wars came to an end just as Wrestlemania 
WrestleMania 17 was about to take place, there was a lot of excitement and intrigue about where American pro wrestling was going to go following the big announcement, but if WrestleMania 17 was anything to go by, then the future looked bright and there was still a lot to look forward to. Now, I don't want to talk about this too much because the last episode of my Reliving the War series is going to cover WrestleMania 17, but I will say this, you'll be doing yourself an incredible injustice if you don't watch this one from start to end. It's very tempting to skip forward to the heavy hitters such as the iconic TLC match or Steve Austin vs The Rock, but watch the whole show from start to end and you're gonna leave feeling very fulfilled. Jericho vs Regal was good, the triple threat hardcore match is way more fun than what it ought to be, Kurt Angle vs Chris Benoit is exactly what you'd expect it to be plus more, Undertaker vs Triple H is great, TLC needs no explanation, and then the show ends with a gripping and pretty violent Rock vs Austin matchup that felt so big at the time. WWF told a wonderful story between these two where they both truly felt like they were the number one guy in the company. Austin even told Rock that he needed to beat him, he had to be champion and he would do whatever it takes to leave Mania as the top guy. And well, Austin meant everything he said. Stone Cold joined forces with his arch nemesis Mr McMahon in order to win the WWF title and while some people didn't enjoy Austin's time as a heel, I thought it gave Stone Cold a great chance to expand on his character a little. I'll come back to WrestleMania 17 soon though, just give me a few years. Mania 17 winning our poll was very predictable, but there's still over half of you who selected different WrestleManias. It was fun to see what other WrestleMania events that you guys enjoyed. If we put Mania 17 on its own little pedestal, then we still get 9 other great WrestleMania events, and I'd say all 10 of these shows need to be watched if you call yourself a WWF or WWE fan. Good choices everyone, so well done. In comparison to the top 10 on Cage Match, we have quite a few differences too and I honestly think that our top 10 is better than Cage Match's, so I'll do this again with other events and see what we end up with. The WrestleMania poll data will also be used for other upcoming videos, so keep your eyes peeled for those in the future. If you missed the chance to vote in today's video, then please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. You'll find posts like this on my community page, so check in often. When subscribed, you should get a notification too if you hit the little bell icon, but don't bet on it either, it's YouTube after all. But I'll be sure to post on socials too when another vote comes up. Thank you for watching though and thanks very much for voting in today's video, take care.